Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and it's uh, comments and answers time, and I'm going to answer uh, a light question. Light, but serious. It's light on me. <laughs> I just uh, changed the starter engine of my car, and uh, starter motor, it's not a full engine, it's just an electric motor, uh, and uh, now I'm just going easy on myself, Nothing that requires drawings or um, organizing my thoughts, but it's it's something that will be very interesting for all of you, and it's uh, Stephen's question. I'm going to show it to you. That's the comment. That's and um, and I'm going to just read it out aloud and share my thoughts on it. And by the way. There you can see that's the web camera that I've been making my latest videos with that uh, received loads of complaints about the crappy sound quality, image sound out of sync, meh. It gets huge thumbs down from, for, from me as well. However, it seems that I will be able to use it for the live sessions. It works for live, but for my normal videos, I will keep on using my phone that I'm using now. So let's get to the to the comment and answering the comment. Janos, the system displayed is turntable driven, two based horn loaded. So now this is a comment on the video on uh, on the Devon Turnbull's system, Ojas Audio, that uh, the audiophiliac made a, a video on and I commented on it and this comment is uh, a comment on my commentary <laughs> so basically Stephen is uh, explaining to everyone that the system that we heard turntable driven tube based horn loaded all handmade audio art I believe in the simplicity of the past and the simplicity in electronics to draw you in close to the music tube-based analog delight. Devon mentioned it's not class D. Many in the audio field use measurements to rate systems. Audio science review has taken off trying to analyze many parameters. Many high-end components are rated poorly. We all know that you can't measure the taste, for example, of an apple. But somehow there's still a lot of confusion. All forms of audio systems are variations on fake sounds. It's all different interpretations of what sounds best. What are your thoughts? So thank you, Stephen, and uh, let's, uh, let me share my thoughts on, on, on the subject. And, uh, and basically, the uh, so the question is about trying to measure the sound and and yet finding out that high end components don't measure well but i have to put a spin on that because audio science review uh his measurements are right but his conclusions are uh, i have not watched many of his videos i have to admit I only watched the uh, two halves of, I mean, two. What started to watch two videos, and uh, I got like a, a few minutes into both of those videos, and uh, and and the measurements that he showed are are sound are very good, but the conclusions he's drawing, uh, just those two videos. Maybe the others are fine. I don't know. But these were the ones that I saw. His conclusions were totally off. They, uh, they, they, they did not arise from the measurements or, or not the measurements as applied to audio. So it's kind of like uh, reminds me, uh, I mean, those two videos reminded me of a PhD student doing his PhD without a mentor. And, and if he were to sit down in front of a committee, they would just take apart uh, his conclusions and then he would just get kicked out and, and have to repeat his thesis because his measurements are good, 
but he does not have the background of putting it into context. And uh, I'm not trying to pull him down or anything, because uh, not everything he says is wrong, but uh, how he interprets things and where the context he's putting in, he is missing key elements uh, sometimes, at least on those videos that I have seen. So I don't want to generalize to all of his videos because it's just a tiny fraction of his output that I'm familiar with. But, but that's my gist of talking to people who's been watching his uh, videos, is that uh, he has good measurements, but the conclusions are of someone who is not familiar with how uh, how the measurements translate to what we hear. And uh, he he's coming from a background of just measurements for the computer's sake. And with those limitations that we think that the measuring system requires, so he thinks within the confines of laboratory gear. He does not have the connection to, to the auditory senses and he does not have the, uh, the connections of putting disciplines together, uh, like electronics, acoustics, mechanical vibrations, everything. So audio is a very, very complex field and everything adds up together. And you cannot just rip out a few measurements and try to uh, interpret them in a vacuum. It, they all have to be within context, interpreted within context, and, uh, and when we are missing the context, we are getting uh, conclusions that do, are not applicable to how, uh, how we hear sound, what is the perceived quality of the sound. Um, so I think that that's something with measurements that, uh, and I'm not blaming Amir because I think he's doing something really good. He's, he's uh, putting in his work and then focusing on it. Um, uh, that, that's good stuff. That, that's really, really good. Uh, but um, the problem is really with the field of audio is that most of the people who have tried uh, measuring things uh, the measurement, the field of measurement at the first place was created to make mass production possible. And, and, and it started because uh, the initial pioneers of amplifier design and loudspeaker design, they created something that was fantastic. And they loved the sound and people to whom they showed their, their uh, prototype, they were just Oh my God, they, they are amazed. And, and, and then they got asked, okay, make me 500 units. And then when they started making, and then it turned out that the first 10 units they, he made, all 10 sounded totally different. And he's like, what's going on? We need to standardize. So the measurement system, uh, the birth of it was not for, for sound quality, it was for quality control to be able to replicate something many times and uh, and and it after a while the field became so in the beginning the measurements were just used to create const products that could be replicated constantly so when you bought a model then the uh, then and then you bought two units they sounded the same so uh, if you like the sound you bought one more to put it in maybe a different room or give it to your friend or something and you know what you were buying uh, however after a while measurement started to take over because the engineer thought okay if it has lower thd it has to sound better if it has higher power output it has to sound better but they they just made these uh, assumptions totally off the cuff there was no physical proof whatsoever behind that and of course uh, if you come from measurements and say of course if it's lower thd it measures better but 
then you look into it and then you just not just scratching the surface but you go very deep you realize that yes THD does have a very substantial very deep impact on the sound but you cannot just make a call that if one is lower than the other then the one that has lower always sounds better no that's not true it can sound better but not necessarily because of the lower THD component in, in it uh, there are many parameters and also THD uh, the way it works is not just a, a, a number of THD uh, an equipment does not just have a THD and that's all every uh, amplifier the THD it changes based on the frequency so if you plot the frequency then the THD curve changes uh, depending on the frequency. Also, output level, higher output, lower output, THD changes. And even if you go more deeply into it, because now uh, all the serious audio designers who it who has it as their living and 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 made measurements the basis of their livelihood. Basically, they have big audio companies. They are uh, producing amplifiers like Nelson Pass or Pass Labs. Uh, everyone who knows Pass Labs, they know that measurements really has been the hallmark of Nelson Pass's uh, life. Or, or like you look at uh, others like Crown, which is more like a uh, more like a PA system type of thing, but but Crown is also legendary among the users who use Crown. He also put a lot of emphasis on measurements, and uh, um, there are other companies, and uh, and and all of those designers uh, who have been really really focusing throughout their careers to get the THD down, to get the measurements down, they have realized that mm, that's not what uh, makes the best sound if I have the measurements the lowest. And it's, it's something far more complicated than that. Um, because well, I, I don't want to get into whys and hows, I have made a gazillion videos on, on THD and distortion. Uh, just like if you lo look up my channel content and start browsing on it, you will find probably like at least like 50 videos or more than I talk about measurements. And it takes like probably if I haven't talked at least 50 hours on THD and how measurements interact with the sound, I probably haven't talked a minute. So. Now I don't want to get any deeper into it, but if you want to, then just go for my channel's homepage and, and dig, and you will find more than you have time to listen for. But, uh, but that's a primer to, to measurements and how they relate to equipment. And, and it's not a futile thing, because you will learn a lot of things, especially if you... Uh, develop your own gear then measurements are a very handy tool to tell you when something changes and and the measurements go blah, kaboom then you know that something has gone wrong and something beyond the point that you wanted to change in the system so it's, it's a really helpful tool to troubleshoot and guide you but it's not the goal and um so all forms of audio systems are variations on fake sounds. Um, I think uh, everything um, affects the sound. The sound is changed by everything. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going with my train of thought that we cannot just take the audio gear and blame everything that 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 the amplifier is is faking the sound or distorting the loudspeaker is distorting no it's the entire process that's doing the change from the from the recording process through the acoustic interface between the loudspeaker and your room 
and 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 also like how where where your sitting position is. So this entire process is the one that changes the sound. And and you if you just want to get an amplifier that measures the best and you are not thinking that you need this entire process to contain the least amount of fakery then then it's not going to end well because you need this whole process to be to stay as authentic as possible and um, I think uh, whatever you are hearing in your stereo it's different than what was played that was recorded it will never be the same and just like even if you have the same guys who were recorded you ask them to play again that will won't be the same either so if you listen to a concert on two different nights you will be listening to two different concerts even though same people doing same performance but it will be different so so that's why I, uh, when people say that, oh, if you, if you listen to the recording, there might be a minor difference between the original and what you heard if your system is really awesome. And then, oh, that's unacceptable. And I, I say like, guys, <laughs> the reality check. Uh, go to the concert on Friday and Saturday. They're, they're different. Same guys playing, same place. <laughs> still different. So... Why do you want the uh, recording to be exact same as as the the one that played? It it can't happen and it won't happen. And 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 we just have to accept first the truth that when those guys played live, that was a unique event and it's never going to happen ever again. It was the moment that was there in time and now it's past. It's gone forever. Done. And, and what we can do is recreate that moment. Will it be the exact same? No, no, not of course. Even if you use the same musicians to recreate the event so that they play live again, even that will not bring back the original event. So I think I just wanted to say that out loud because uh, people are just so much into glorifying the actual event like like that's something sacred or whatnot i don't know uh, it's like uh, mm, I'm, I'm not glorifying anything uh, and and i think that's not not the point that that we put the the event in on a pedestal i think much more important is that we make a connection to the musicians to the music instead of treating them like a fetish like a uh, like a subject of unattainable desire and we are willing to pay millions just to have a system that will bring us there it will never bring us there and and doesn't matter how much money you throw at it but where my attention is and i'm not saying that's where everyone's attention should be everyone is free to choose whatever they want to choose but i think what is a realistic goal is to uh, have a means have a stereo system that will allow allow you to connect to the musician to have that heart to heart connection to be able to absorb the music and and it's uh, it's something just that has so much complexity, and it's not something that can be A/B tested, and uh, it, it's something that everyone needs to find uh, whatever the sound is, whatever the sound envelope is that can connect you to the musicians, and that's so different for every single one of us, and that's why audiophiles can never agree on what is the best system because all of the systems have different envelopes and, and even if there was a perfect envelope then because of the recordings themselves are so different then a single system can match only one recording type 
so so if you have like a perfect system then it will work maybe only for chesky records and nothing else and uh, and i think that's where part of the the system building strategy can go wrong is if you hyper optimize your system for a single label or a single recording style then everything else will sound as you said here Stephen, fake and 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 the really hard bit is to optimize your system so that uh, it's not just uh, hard tuned to one certain point of view which is like a really rigid way of uh, creating sound but is more open to a wider range so that you can you see all those records behind me and all those cds i'm sitting on they they are still accessible to me and 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 this type of audio system where we started from uh, that uh, two-based horn-loaded turntable driven that allows you to have the fullest access to a wide range of recordings without feeling uh, mechanical. So I think I still have barely even scratched the surface but it's already 21 minutes past so I'm going to cut this video short here and I, I hope uh, that uh, I, I gave a few pointers on, on, uh, on the subject and um, I will continue later again and uh, thank you Stephen for your comment and uh, have an awesome day bye bye <laughs>